Hello, I'm Soraya, and welcome to Monetize Your Social, the podcast where I basically talk about my journey and sometimes my friends' journeys and everything I've learned on how to turn your social media and the time you spend on social media into something that pays you and brings you joy and freedom and options with money. (laughs) That is what I'm all about here. So if that's you, super glad that you're here. I know I have a lot of new listeners and a lot of new followers. So very glad if you are new to this. So I'm going to talk today about something that I really kind of have just stumbled upon, and that is, do you need a niche or no? This is going to be some thoughts about personal branding versus niches, and I'll tell you why I'm kind of juxtaposing those two things and why I think that they are not the same. Disclaimer, this is just my opinion. You can take it or leave it. Like, I am not going to get into Instagram or TikTok, you know, content debates. (laughs) Like, it's just not worth it for me. I think, though, if you listen to this, that you'll find some similar struggles if you are in the world of social selling. So here's the question. Do you need a niche for social selling? And I'm going to give you my answer right away. Spoiler alert, it depends. It absolutely depends. So I'll tell you how I got here and why this is such a passionate topic for me. I used to think, because all my coaches and gurus and all the people that I followed said, you got a niche down, you got a niche down. In fact, at some point, I actually held a workshop called Nail Your Niche. And I stand by everything that I taught in that workshop with a big asterisk. And I'll get to what that asterisk is. It was a damn good workshop, by the way. But I used to think that the only way that you could sell stuff on social media was to have a niche. Because literally, that's what everybody was talking about. I mean, I I can't recall. Maybe if there was someone that was talking about something else out there, I just didn't see them. But everybody was saying you got an inch down. In fact, quite frankly, today still, I don't know, 80% of people still say you got an inch down, you got an inch down. And so that whole concept stressed me out. Let me know, like DM me. Tell me if that stressed you out too. Because I wasn't known for anything. It just felt weird. I was like, well, I'm not an expert in anything. I've had a, by by the time I started my social selling business, I had been in the army for like 18 years. I was like, okay, well, I can talk about the army, but that's not going to attract the right people that I need to sell my stuff. So what's my niche? I don't really have a niche. Like I'm just Soraya. I don't know. I can talk about the fact that I live in Washington, D.C., where I lived at the time. I can talk about that I like traveling and cooking, but like I'm not an expert in any of those things. So something felt really off and I struggled. And my hypothesis is that a lot of people who get into social selling or don't even ever take the leap into social selling are scared off because of this issue, because they're not an expert in anything. They don't feel like they have credibility because they don't. And they don't know what to talk about. And so that is where I was. I wasn't sure what was going on. I wasn't someone who had a social media presence. And I was absolutely terrified. So what did I do? I started talking about the fact that I was learning about social media. And over time, my niche became, let me share what I'm learning about social media with you, which is perfectly fine. And I'm grateful for that journey. And I think it was actually a pretty smart journey for me to take because it has grown me an awesome business. But along the way, there were some stumbling blocks, like just some challenges. In fact, the first challenge, I've talked about this on the podcast before, was that I didn't know how to reconcile the fact that I wanted to talk about the products that I was selling. And and this is, remember, in the context of social selling and network marketing. I wanted to talk about products, but I also wanted to talk about the business. I'm passionate about the business, and I also love the products. So I was like, well, how do I do that if I've niched down to this thing where I'm talking about social media all the time? Like, none of that has to do with social media. Look, I I cannot, I cannot describe how much money I've spent on hiring coaches to deal with this problem. I felt stuck for years. I felt stuck for years, literally years. That's not an exaggeration. Years I felt stuck about, well, how do I reconcile the fact that I want to talk about the products and I want to talk about the business and I want to talk about my life 
And none of that has to do with social media, which was my quote unquote niche. So I just never talked about it, which worked for about four years. And I built a business with it, made lots of money with it, sold courses with it, started coaching with it, all that kind of stuff. Not a problem. And I finally got to the point where like, I couldn't ignore that something felt off and I was very frustrated. And I was like, look, I am showing up every day on social media, on Instagram stories and doing all this stuff. And yet you know nothing about me because I'm hiding 99% of my life and not talking about it because it doesn't fall into my niche. And so I started by default, I started talking about my home renovation. By this point, this was like 2020 and I had gone through a miscarriage and I had been on a two-year fertility journey that I never talked about on social media. And I had moved to San Antonio that I didn't really talk about on social media. And I had bought a house and I started remodeling it. And I was so burnt out because there was a gap. There was a gap and a, I don't know, a canyon, (laughs) a grand canyon of frustration between where I was in my personal life and where I was like teaching people about social media online. I was so frustrated with social media. This is 2020 and pandemic nonsense and people arguing and heated debates. And You know, you, you get it. You were there. So I was like, here I am talking about social media online. And I don't want to talk about social media online because I hate it right now because 2020 sucks and everybody sucks. That was my attitude. <laughs> And I'm over here like moving across the country and getting prepared for this new job in San Antonio and leaving my life. And I just had a miscarriage and my life is falling apart and I'm renovating a house. So I don't really want to talk about social media. So what did I start doing? Just out of desperation, I knew I had to show up. I knew I had to do something. I started talking about my home remodel and oh my God, my freaking engagement went through the roof. It went through the roof. As were before, I was editing what I was talking about, and it was really frustrating. And over time, again, I was just doing this out of desperation, but something started to click. I was like, oh, well, maybe I'm onto something. Like, obviously, home renovation has nothing to do with my business and nothing to do with social media, but people are loving it. And I'm finally getting engagement again, and I finally actually look forward to talking on Instagram stories. This is before I had really gotten into TikTok and... So I just started showing up and then I started talking about my dogs and lo and behold, I started talking about all sorts of other things, still talking about social media, but not as the only thing. And let me just cut to the chase. It not only worked, but it made me feel better. It made me feel better. And guess what? When you feel better, you show up better. When you show up better, your business grows. When your business grows, it makes you feel better. And it's like this whole feedback loop of goodness. So I was like, well, Forget the freaking, you know, people online, including myself, who were still preaching niches, niches, niches. Like, I'm just going to do what feels good. And again, I didn't know what else to do because at this point, I was just desperate to feel good so that I wanted to show up. I'm assuming this probably resonates with you. You may not have gone through like a huge bout of this like I did, but I guarantee you at some point in your life, at some point since you've started your business, You have just personally been going through stuff, so you didn't want to show up on social media. Well, the more I started showing up with all this other stuff, the more that people were interested and the more it encouraged me to get back online. So over time, I changed my mind on niches and it was a slow evolution. It took about three years, very slow evolution, but I started to realize that I needed to show up with all of me. And more than just like, oh, five fun facts about me or a Friday introduction post, like that's great, but I needed to really show up as my whole self because it was killing me not to. It was crushing my creativity. I wasn't talking about the army, which is a huge part of my life. I wasn't talking about my dogs or house hunting or mental health or IVF, all these massive things that were going on in my life. And the more I talked about them, the better I felt and the better response I got. So I eventually landed on the idea that I am my niche. I am my niche. I don't have a niche. I am not a social media guru. I'm not a social media expert. I definitely study it, and I guess I'm an expert relative to everybody else, but that's not the only thing I am. So I started to incorporate all sorts of other stuff 
And it took some time to readjust. And I certainly still mostly talk about social media, but I am starting to incorporate more and more things. If you spend any time on TikTok, particularly, and I'm recording this January of 2023. So as of right now, it is absolutely impossible to be on an app like TikTok and not see the change that has happened and that we are interested, we, the collective we, are interested more in who people are than we were three years ago on social media. We're interested in a holistic view of somebody rather than just like what expertise they can provide us. We want to know the face behind that expertise, even if they are an expert. And so I like to say that like influencers are out, (laughs) experts are out, and creators are in. Even the people who are quote unquote experts or actual experts, like they've studied something and have a profession in it, even them, we want to know things about them. So let me just give you a little bit of a breakdown about what is a niche and what is a personal brand because that's what I have now. I have a personal brand. I don't necessarily have a niche. I I don't have a niche. Let me rephrase that. I do not have a niche. I am a personal brand. And my thesis that I'm going to share with you in the rest of this podcast is that if you are in social selling, you've got to choose. You can either be a niched expert or you can show up as a personal brand. And there are pros and cons to each. There's no right or wrong answer. I'm certainly not going to tell you which one you need to be, but it'll be very apparent by the end of this podcast which one in your heart that you want to be. So what is a niche? It basically means if you have a niche that you're reaching out to a specific group of consumers with a very specific interest or need. You are solving a problem and you are talking about that problem in all of your content. For example, a niche could be that you're a curly hair expert or that you are an expert in travel to the Caribbean or that you are focusing on helping mothers in their 40s and the specific challenges and journeys that are unique to mothers in their 40s. Like that's a very specific niche. So here's the good parts of having a business like that. Number one, you have faster growth because if you're talking about, let's say, mothers in their 40s and specific challenges and journeys to people in their 40s, you're going to build an audience of mothers in their 40s, which is exactly who you want to be talking to and most likely selling whatever you're selling to. So it makes sense. Another pro is that if you are really knowledgeable about this topic, you get to show that knowledge off and distinguish yourself from the crowd. So that's awesome. And there are certainly other pros. But let's talk about some of the cons. If you build an audience talking about one specific thing and then you switch talking about that thing, let's say you're an expert in being a mother in your 40s and those type of challenges. And then the next day you're talking about I don't know, your vacation to Bali or your money-saving techniques or something that might not be related or maybe your hair routine or your makeup routine or whatever it is, at this point, your audience might not enjoy seeing about that and they might be turned off because they are following you for something specific. They may leave or get annoyed, which is fine, totally fine, but that's just a risk that you have to weigh. And in social selling, this is a huge point. If you are showing up as an expert, even a self-taught expert, people assume that if you're an expert and you know more than them, that they can't also be you. They can't do what you're doing and they can't also be an expert like you, which if you're particularly in network marketing, does not help, does not help. However, you can certainly overcome that. I'll give you an example. You guys know that I'm a brand rep for a shampoo line. There are so many people crushing it in my company that have accounts all about hair, all about hair. Totally fine to do that. Totally fine to do that. But let's contrast that with a more personal brand. Okay, so a personal brand, by my definition, is the way you present yourself to the world. It's your digital presence. It's you showing up and showcasing your skills, your values, your personality, your reputation, the things that you're passionate about, all of the above, and documenting your journey and showing that with your audience so that you stand out by just being uniquely you. Now, in this context, 
you you are your niche, right? This is what I focus on. You are your niche. You get people familiar with your story by documenting your day. You can document your likes, your dislikes, your favorite products, your family, your travels, your business, your personal struggles, your mental health, anything that you want. So some pros and cons. Your pros is that your audience will stay because they like you. They're not following you because you're necessarily like a licensed expert in anything. That gives you better longevity over time and it gives you flexibility to sell to sell more than one product or to diversify your income streams. So let's say, um, like in my case, I'm a brand rep for a hair care company, but I also am an affiliate marketer for other things. I'm an affiliate for a um, infrared sauna company. I'm an, inf- uh, an affiliate for a company called Organifi, which sells basically like healthy supplement drinks, which I'm obsessed with. And so that's awesome because I can do more than one thing. Now, if you're not focused, that can detract you from your network marketing or social selling income, but that's a topic for another another podcast. But here's the thing. If you have a personal brand, like what happens if you're in social selling and you have branded yourself as the hair person, and then something happens to the company. Like the company goes out of business, which happens. I mean, knock on wood that mine won't, but like it happens. Or I was in another network marketing company before this. If I had branded myself as the essential oil, healthy, non-toxic living person, and then I was like, oh, just kidding. Now my account's all about hair. Like that's weird, right? That's weird. All of a sudden, everybody in your following is like, well, um, that's not what I'm here for. If you've built trust, they'll still follow you. But if you have a personal brand and your brand includes the things that you love and isn't necessarily based on your expertise about the things that you love, then they're following because of you and your unique personality and the way you show up in the world. So for social sellers, I think it's a huge pro. Also, building a um, personal brand it it basically is allowing you not to be an expert. And all you have to do is document your journey. So you can show up on day one and say, hey, look, I don't know anything about hair. Like I know my own hair, but I don't know anything about your hair or how to help you. But I'm going to try this new shampoo and I'm going to let you know how it goes. And if you want some, I'm happy to refer you to where I get it. And that is so much easier for duplication than being like, well, I'm a certified trichologist and I am, you know, I've taken 14 courses on healthy hair and I can answer all your questions about hair. Well, hell, I can't do that now. (laughs) I can't even do that. So like, it's a little bit more duplicatable. Now, again, the cons are that it's harder to grow your audience. And that's a big con because it takes time and you have to be okay with showing up honestly and authentically and being vulnerable and showing your true personality. So if you're guarded and you have a hard time showing up on social media, this may not be the route for you. Maybe you do want to position yourself as an expert in a niche. But for most of us who are just regular old people and we aren't necessarily experts on anything, like this is a really easy way to do it. Because again, one of the cons of a personal brand is you have to be okay in your own skin. You have to have an opinion. You have to show up consistently and you have to be okay with a little bit slower growth. This is why everyone's so desperate to go viral because they think that that's the answer to their growth. But we just need to accept that having a personal brand probably means that you're not going to grow like a rocket ship. And that is totally okay, because there are other benefits to having a personal brand. So those are the differences. There's many, many more. But for most social sellers who want to talk about more than one thing, I recommend just understanding that you are a personal brand, you're not a niche, you're not an expert, and creating content that documents the things that you're going through, documents your experiences, documents your day, documents your journey through your business. And that way you can talk about your products, your business, your life, your family, and it's not so difficult to come up with content. So I hope that that helped you. I've talked about storytelling on this podcast. I'll continue to talk about storytelling, but storytelling in your personal brand is so important. And one of the tools that I have to help you with that is a downloadable fill-in-the-blank caption worksheet. It's 16 captions, if I remember correctly, that are really easy to use over and over and over again and to put your own spin on them. If you go to the link in the show notes here, you can download that. That will also put you on my email list, which is where, quite frankly, all my secrets and my best content go. So 
please grab that fill in the blank caption worksheet and share this podcast with anyone who you think this might help. If you're in network marketing and your team is struggling with this, I would love you forever if you would just share this with them because I think more people need to understand this. I think it takes the pressure off them and that's what I'm here to do. All right. I will talk to you soon. Bye.